Welcome to the Crimes Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Last month, we ventured to Brandon, Manitoba amidst the buzz and energy of the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference. Amidst the conference, we seized the opportunity to engage with local leaders from across the province. Now, today, we are delving into the pressing issues confronting communities, firsthand, that is, amplifying the voices of municipal leaders and offering insights into the diverse challenges faced by local governments in Manitoba. So we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Reeve Michelle Gronowski from the rural municipality of Stewart Burn, Manitoba. In the heart of every thriving community lies a well-crafted strategic plan. But crafting such a plan requires expertise, experience, and a deep understanding of local needs. Enter Strategic Steps, your partner in municipal strategic planning. Strategic Steps team of experts have years of experience in municipal administration. At Strategic Steps, they just don't develop plans. They co-create homegrown strategies tailored to your unique community. They listen, they collaborate, they empower your community to thrive. Contact Strategic Steps today and take the first step towards a brighter future for your municipality. Call Strategic Steps at 780-416-9255 or visit strategicsteps.ca to get started. Michelle, thank you so much for doing this. I want to start by asking a, a simple question, but it's an overarching one. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Michelle? My mother. How my so? mother and my grandmother. Uh, my mother was a nurse. My grandmother was a civil servant up in northern Manitoba, up in the Paw. And one of the things you always did was you gave back to your community because we always had more than some, less than others, but we were always very grateful for everything we had. And my mother raised us, 10 kids, that you always gave back to your community. It's major important. So how does someone from that background become the i want to make sure because i just spoke to an <laughs> rm mayor and in, in manitoba only you would have a mayor and a reeve be a part of an rm but how does how does someone from your background become the reeve of your community requested by the constituents really yes is that I, all it took you it's well it was something i've never thought of doing i was the president of the manitoba government and general employees union for 10 years so the biggest public sector union in the province um, so I, I definitely knew you know, about serving the public and what we needed to do and having you know, the stakeholders, your shareholders, you know, the, the uh, rate payers. Um, one of the other things, my husband had been Deputy Reeve. He was on council for 14 years before he passed away. and In fact, he was still a councillor when he passed. Um, and it was a great sense of pride knowing what he could do. There's always been a vision, and I know the strengths what we have in our community. I'm so very proud of where I live, um, you know, and, and the people that are there, and I know what we can build when we're working together to make it happen. So when folks came to me and said, okay, you're not the president anymore, please become our Reeve. And at first I said, no, I don't think so. I'm done with politics. And then the second group came and said, please reconsider. So I went around to the whole area and talked to folks. And I said, you know, what do you see as a vision to see if whether my visions would actually match, meet, you know, what their expectations were that my job would be. And uh, yeah, I ran and won and love every minute of it. So I'm going to ask a sensitive question if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, first off, uh, your husband served for 14 years. You are now serving in that same capacity, in, in that same council? He was a yeah, same, same RM. So he was a counselor and a deputy reeve. And so I you, you sit in the same room that he sat and made those decisions. Now you're yes. making those decisions. How impactful is that for you to sit there and Huge. have that connection with someone you've loved and have lost, and now you are sitting in the same room that he did to make those decisions? It's, it's actually a sense of honor that I have. I know how committed my husband was to his community. There are oftentimes the kids and I would joke that his community came before us. It was the cows, the community, and then his family. <laughs> um, so to know that I'm actually kind of carrying on a legacy, he's seen a lot of the vision of our RM and where it could go and the growth that we could have. And he always seen the value. Yes, there's lots of negatives, but there's always so very many positives. And the positives outweigh the negatives. So to be able to do that, 
is pretty awesome for me. So I want to talk about the RM as a whole, if you don't mind. I want to ask a stupid but overarching question again, but it, it's one that I think I know a lot of the answers to, but it's always interesting to hear from the people who are actually serving in this capacity. What do you see as the biggest challenge facing the RM today? Funding. Funding how? Funding to be able to build and expand within the, the municipality. We only have about 1,750 rate payers, to, and we have a very large area with many, many, many concerns. So, so are you part of the one? Are you one of the RMs that were sort of made post amalgamation, or no? Okay, no, we we were an LGD, the local government uh, district, okay. and then became <laughs> okay. yes, the, the municipality. Um, but so the the funding is our biggest challenge, uh, and inheriting what previous government. Um, handed down as the responsibility to the RMs, a.k.a. our roads, um, drainage, the ditching, you know, and what do you do? Along with all of that and the challenges and not having enough funding, we have endangered species. So we are the RM. It's one of the only places in Canada, and I think only the second place in the world, where we have a fringed orchid. And it is... Yes, I, I know. Very well kept secret, but not. Um, Nature's Conservancy it owns a large area around us, and within that, they found 37 endangered species, one of which we actually have the fringed orchid, which is, it, I'm very proud of it, and I think it's something that we can capitalize once I can, can get everyone on the same page that we don't all hate it, because of course, it does disrupt farming, it disrupts drainage, it disrupts you know, fencing and everything else that is needed. So once we figure out how we can embrace and work together with it, it's going to be a huge benefit for us. So we are recording this almost a week after the provincial government tabled their provincial budget. I'm going to ask the political question now because I can't do an <laughs> interview with any mayor without asking at least one political question. Absolutely. In your opinion, do you see that this provincial budget helped the RMM Stuart burn? Absolutely, no doubt in my mind. And I just uh, thanked Minister Bushy for continuing with the increase. There was a, an increase. Uh, it was supposed after to be... After a pause? After a very <laughs> a long, long pause. pause. Um, you know, so it never did get us up to the standard where we possibly should have been to be able to absorb all the costs of everything else going up. But having this government not only make sure we get it again this year, but have made it a, a permanent is huge and the additional two percent and the minister just said to us that this is what they're looking at as a baseline for us going forward so and the that's one of the biggest ones for us the second one is that i can actually sit down in a room with any minister of this government in fact the premier and actually talk to him about our issues and share with them and to be able to do that is it's enormous for us so I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate with you because what what happened with the provincial budget is great, and I would yes. agree with that. But the flip side to that is you know that that funding is not going to solve every single problem that your arm faces today. Absolutely. So how do you see yourself addressing those issues while balancing the needs of your community with the understanding that the realities that we face today, people are struggling? They people are. are hurting, and you don't yep. want to do it on the backs of the people who are there. Exactly. So yeah. how do you, we, how do you, and I say you as the royal you, do that as a council? Uh, we partner up. You take a look. You start prioritizing. You come up with a strate strategic plan that actually comes from the ratepayers. What do they want to see happen? What do our businesses need from us? And how can we partner with the businesses to improve you know, different things in within the community, um, which then leads you to a partnership with the provincial government and the federal government. Most people don't think that the RMs can go to the federal government, yeah. but there is an avenue to do that one as well. Yeah. And when you come up with a good strategic plan, which is something that this new council and I are doing, and actually looking forward, not next year, but next year, five years, 10 years down the road, how are we going to be able to promote and partner and who are we partnering with and not where we're always coming with a hand out but we want a hand up yeah. and then we can help our constituents as well in their hand up and how do we make sure that the ratepayers 
are involved and actually are respected for their opinions as well. So I want to turn to my, my favorite subject because I think it's important because I've said on this show, if you come on the show, I come to your community. So I'm going to be in Stewart Burn later on this year. Uh, oh. This summer, I'm doing a big tour through Manitoba. And I've got to ask, what are some tourist spots that someone should come and see? Well, Besides having a coffee with yourself yes, at La Course. You're, you're going to have to come and actually we're going to introduce you to some good Ukrainian food. Ooh, we okay. have the best pierogies and fried cream sauce. Okay. Okay. This side of the Ukraine, let okay. me tell you. So let me know when you're coming. We will have this set up, and I can have a whole crew of our folks actually come out and talk to you if you like. I would love that. Uh, yeah, it would be fantastic. Um, some of the, the we have a huge multicultural community. It yeah. started off Ukrainian in the early 1900s, late 1800s actually, and we're capitalizing on the fact that we were actually the very <coughs> first Ukrainian settlement in the province of Manitoba. Oh, wow. And we now have proof of that. So we're starting to look at the tourism and what can we do. We have the oldest Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Canada is in our RM. We have a huge Amish community that is absolutely phenomenal to, to just to be able to go out and watch them and how they do their hang when they're doing it with size and sickles and they're actually using a team of horses and the wagons. Um, they're, they're on their, they're moving, they're going to be relocating, but we have old order Mennonites that are basically along the same. They don't use oh, the technology of today. And uh, I've been helping a, a lot with um, <laughs> Some of the issues they've had, a simple thing is registering their babies. They have their babies at home. They don't use phones. They don't use computers. And they've had a real challenge in trying to make sure they have birth certificates. So I've been helping with that. And it's amazing to see how technology can leave out a whole community without even recognizing that they've been left out. So we have that. We have the Garrington Park and the, and the uh, we now call it multiculturalism festival because there's so many we have a filipino community in our area as well we've got a mennonite area um and there's so much that goes on well i'm looking you have to come. <laughs> i'm looking forward to it my last question and it's yes. the important one okay what makes the rm of stewart burn such a unique place to live to work and to raise a family the people it is the people, absolutely. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, like I say, it went from a Ukrainian to a Ukrainian Mennonite to a Ukrainian Mennonite French, and now we've got the Filipinos, we've got the Amish, we've got the Old Order Mennonites coming in. Uh, we have Vietnamese. We now have a Vietnamese restaurant within our community as well. Oh. So the people make our community, and very proud of them, and I'm very honored to be representing them. And to sit down and have a coffee with anybody when they come through. I always try and sit down with newcomers that come in and explain. My husband had a tradition that he would do. And I'm not Ukrainian. I'm from the PA, actually, originally. And uh, But I, lear I I taught myself how to make the 12 meatless Ukrainian dishes. Oh. And we would do <laughs> Ukrainian Christmas Eve. And my husband would welcome a family the newcomers into our community and they would join our family for Christmas Eve and we would go through the whole traditions and explain it to them. And we have lifelong friends since then. So, Michelle, <laughs> I can't wait to come up to the RM. So thank you so much for sitting down thank with you, me. Chris. I and can't I wait till you come. I'm going to be showing up. I, I'm going to take you out and show you everything we've got. That's so. what I like to hear. I want the mayor, the Reeve tour. Yes, you will get it. We want to thank the Association of Manitoba Municipalities for inviting us to this year's Spring Convention in Brandon, Manitoba. This episode would not have been possible without their support. Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, the local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage from across Canada, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged on the issues affecting municipalities. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep 